This is Next Radio. Next Radio. With broadcast bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people. I hope it's okay that I use a, uh, an iPad for my notes. Uh, the reason being that I, never, I work in radio. I never actually learn anything at all. Uh, that can be a problem. Uh, I was the other day on the Syrian border, and the temperature was 46 degrees. And I'd, again, failed to learn all the script that I was going to talk about. I'd, forget, I'd failed to learn the names of all the guests that I was going to introduce and the names on the people of the people on the tapes that I was going to introduce as well, which were back in London. And as they started reading the queue, I looked down at my script on my iPad and realized that all it said was, in that Apple way that they have, hey, guys, this iPad's a bit hot. It's cooling down. And it just went blank. Uh, <laughs> So, luckily, the, uh, the BBC med kit has anti-diarrhea tablets. Um, for a medium that prides itself on its fluidity, radio really is uh, dreadful at making the most of modern innovations. We still use the same ways of getting on the air that we did 30 years ago. When I started at Radio City, they took me into this little room and they showed me this box. And they said, this is the future. This is ISDN. Now... Not only are we slow to buy into it, we're slow to trust it, and we're slow to pass it out to reporters in the field. I hear the same arguments time and time again. We're not investing in it because it's too new. We're not investing in it because it's too expensive. Now, these are the same people that paid the equivalent of £5,224 for every Ewer tape recorder in 1987. Uh, now they're complaining about buying a 500 quid iPhone. Um, as an industry, we need to speed up. Because the only way that we're going to do actually reflect the world that we report on is if we start moving at the same speed as it. So, uh, for as long as I've worked in radio, we've used these units. ISDN codex, this one by Glenn Sound. Engineers still love ISDN because they say it's a point-to-point -point link. And it doesn't go wrong. If it does go wrong, it's the reporter's fault. Or it's the uh, BT's fault. Or it's the radio station's fault. It's never the engineer's fault. Um, Radio station managers love it as well because it only takes a reporter to plug it in, so you don't need an engineer, so you can make the engineer redundant. Uh, what's always surprised me, however, is that the sound that you get from an ISDN line is crap. It's awful. It's narrow, it's thin, and it sounded thin 20 years ago. Now it's the sound of AA Roadwatch. It's the sound of the leader of Lancashire County Council joining us live from the studio. The biggest problem, though, is not the £500 installation charge, um, or the fact that it's terrible quality. It's the fact that you are tied still when you use one of these by a piece of wire to a socket. It's not an outside broadcast. It's not a live event. Can you imagine trying to use ISDN for something like the, the Queen's Flotilla last year or for trying to report on the, the funeral, the, the mock funeral of Margaret Thatcher, which weaned, wound its way around the villages of South Yorkshire, trying to follow a news story because news actually moves, is really, really difficult if you're tied by a wire. Even if it's a long wire, you're still tied to a wire. All you've done is you've created a radio station without the comfy chair and the air conditioning. Now, in the 1990s, I used to use this radio van with its 30-foot mast. It was operated and driven by a sound engineer, and it had a 16-channel mixing desk in the back of it. Frankly, slightly overkill for a piece about a new shopping center in Rochdale. Um, when it was replaced, we chose to use portable satellite dishes. This is an M4. Uh, it used to broadcast my voice from the center of Manchester all the way around the world and then back to the studios in Salford. The cost of it was astro as astron astronomical as the satellite. Uh, it, each disc cost £5,000. Uh, it costs £5 a minute to run. Now, if you extrapolate that out, I used one for 12 years for 45 weeks a year, doing an average of about eight lives a week uh, that were on for four minutes a time at five pounds a minute. And that roughly equates to about half of Mark Byford's redundancy package. <laughs> but what does it give you that you didn't have before? Well, it gives you mobility. Uh, live radio is, is something that's really important, but live radio in the most dangerous and hard to broadcast from places in the world became possible. Uh, the trouble is, it's still a very delicate piece of kit and it can't be repaired easily out in the field. It's also getting harder and harder to get them into foreign countries. If you turn up with one of those in Beirut, you get a £10,000 fine on the spot. Uh, luckily for me, the BBC is better than any other organisation at spotting and buying into new technology and also having the best accountants who say, hang on, 
you're spending far too much on that. You need something cheaper. So we did get something cheaper, and we got instead the Comrex. Um, the Comrex Access was... Uh, there we go. Comrex Access was supposed to be the breakthrough in portable live broadcasting. Uh, High-quality voice over 3G or Wi-Fi. It was designed by the same people who put a mixing desk bigger than the one that was used to record Sergeant Pepper in the back of my radio car. Um, it has all sorts of things. It has little things that you have to plug in. It has wires that hang out of it. It has PCM CIA cards, USB dongles, all sorts of things, and all sorts of things that can go wrong, as long as you hold it just like that as you're shaking. It's very, very good. But the, the great thing about it is it means that for the first time, you can move around and broadcast at the same time. And then this thing turned up, the iPhone. Uh, it changed broadcasting completely. It was like a Comrex built by someone with taste. Uh, if you look at the number of things it does, it records audio, it records video, it records photographs. You can send in that material. You can mix the audio into multi-track packages. You can even go live on radio and television with it. You can just see that it's fantastic. Now, normally, at this point, someone leaps out and says, what about Android? It's normally James. Um, yes, you can get live broadcast VoIP apps on Android. But the problem that's always been with Android is that Apple makes the iPhone, Apple makes the microphone, Apple makes the operating system. Uh, I bought an orange San Francisco phone. It was £43 and ran Android, and it was terrible. I then went and bought a Samsung, and it wasn't bad. It was okay. I could have used it for, for recording. And then I had to buy another Samsung uh, when I was in Jordan last week, and it was terrible. Now, that's two phones by the same manufacturer, both with completely different microphone technology inside them. And you can't depend on it. An iPhone is an iPhone is an iPhone. So it tends to work. Um, so back to the iPhone. I don't want to get bogged down with which app we use for, for live broadcasting. There are loads. There's ones from Lucy Live, which is, I think, 300 pounds, down to Lucy Light, which is 21 pounds and does exactly the same thing. Uh, you can get free versions. You can get Viber, which is almost broadcast quality. You can get Skype. You can get in iOS 7. You can get uh, FaceTime audio, which is a bit of a misnomer, but you know what I mean. Um, there are lots of ways of getting on, getting things. Now, if there's one thing I get tired of, my inbox is always full of people saying, oh, we used Lucy Live, or we used Report It, and we fell off the air. And I always say at that point, well, where did you use it? And they always say, oh, it was at Old Trafford at 3.45 in the afternoon, and we didn't get a signal. Or we were on the top of Snowden. We didn't get a signal. Um, some doubters will say, what do you do when you don't have a phone signal? To which they, I normally whip this thing out. This is a baby BGAN. This is the latest satellite dish that the BBC has just been involved in, in engineering. The great thing about it is that you set it up, you point it at the sky, and it has a Wi-Fi hub in it. So you can get your iPhone with Lucy Live on, and you can talk directly to it wirelessly. So the other day, I was on the Jordan border in a, a refugee camp. That was inside the car. There was a sandstorm going on. That was in the car, pointing at the sky with the connection. I was out in the refugee camp talking to people in their houses and their tents with nothing in between us but the Wi-Fi connection. So you can now broadcast from anywhere in the world just using voice over internet protocol applications and just using a satellite as well. Now, I know that it's a cost, and you know, that's one of the things that there is, but it, it's there. So if you really want to see why mobile devices are very important, though, you need to look at how they are saving reporters' lives. During the riots in 2011, traditional broadcasters found themselves uh, in real danger. There were camera crews set upon, there were radio cars burnt out um, because they were easy to spot and they became the targets for themselves. Radio Manchester's radio car was set upon, turned over and burnt out. Luckily, their reporter escaped. So it was really important that you stayed as low-key as possible. Now, we were able to do it because I used the phone just like this to broadcast in quality. And to prove what the quality is like, I'm using the internal microphone on the iPhone to record this link. Here, I'll prove it. I was able to file stills, video and copy directly into EMPS and keep up to date with what was happening elsewhere by watching the news channel and listening to Five Live and Radio Manchester. It did the job of a laptop computer a Blackberry, an audio recorder, a stills camera, a video camera, a television, a radio, and indeed, a radio car. All of this was done without having to find a Wi-Fi network. All I did was connect using 3G. Back to Nick Garnet. Nick, you're in Manchester city centre. What's happening now? 
They're looting a shop in front of me at the moment. We've just walked past the plasma TV that had been taken out of a cash converter's shop. Uh, the rioters in front of me now running because they can see the police coming. Uh, try, the police are coming up on two directions to try and cut them off. In 2001, when the Bradford riots happened, the only safe point for the radio car was two miles away. That meant live broadcasting was almost impossible. Now, thanks to Lucy Live, the live point is wherever I happen to be standing. With one device, I can update Twitter, I can update Quickfire, I can uh, send emails, I can take video, I can take stills photographs, I can record, edit, mix and send multi-track audio packages. And to top it all, I can go live as well. It's a little bit better than perhaps using it for playing Angry Birds. So it's, it's, it's really now up to the radio industry to, to accept that this technology is here and it's not something new. It's what everybody else is using. You're using it in your day-to-day -day lives all the time and yet we're still worried about using it on the air. If things go wrong, it's not brain surgery. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes they do. But the way that we have to develop it is we have to give these devices, whether it be an Android, whether it be an iPhone, whether it be anything, and give them to all our reporters, all our staff, from every single member of a radio station. And suddenly you've got every single member as a potential live reporter if something happens. And, and after years of trying to keep up with the so-called YouTube generation, we can take the mantle back and pull it back, and we can broadcast from the streets, reporting on what's happening on the streets, live. Thank you very much indeed. It actually was interesting for me that people still talking about whether we should actually do that since we in our little tech bubble have been doing that for years and it's absolutely normal. What I've enjoyed the most today has been being able to meet people and being here in this amazing place with all these radio professionals. One of the great things about all the stuff that we're hearing today is that whether you're a big national brand or whether you're a little local station, um, there's something for you. This is Next Radio. With broadcast by Onyx. Innovative solutions for creative people.